Okay, so this video is basically just going to be me detailing the diffusion setup that I have for the MPE65, which I'm extending here, and the 5D Mark IV. Uh, if you don't know what the MPE65 is, it's a Canon lens that goes from 1X to 5X, and here's me twisting that again. Basically, the limitations with the MPE is that as you go up in magnification from 1x to 5x, it's naturally going to be darker. With increased magnification, you're going to need more light on your subject. Um, so just to, before I get into the light, what I have with this is basically I have the lens, the MPE 65. I have the 5D Mark IV, and then that L bracket that you see is a three-legged thing L bracket. Really good L bracket. It's... Uh, Obviously, Arca on uh, both sides. It's meant for one with a battery grip, uh, but I like it actually just on a plain body without the battery grip. So next, what we're going to go to is the MT24EX. This is a Canon flash. Uh, basically, it's a twin head flash that doesn't come with a lot of this stuff. Uh, the... So what I'm showing here is the actual controller. And I'm probably going to pop it on. There it goes. Typically what I do for my, uh, for my settings is I set it to 1 8 on both heads. Uh, I have it on second sync or second curtain sync. And a couple unique things about what I do with mine is I have some Israeli arms, which is what I'm pointing to right now. Those Israeli arms let me get those flash heads back behind the actual uh, the actual bracket that you see that I'm pointing to now. What that does is at higher magnifications, the light's able to kind of cross uh, and angle down. If, if I put the heads in the natural uh, spot, uh, where the, I guess, where Canon intended them to be with the diffusers that I have on there, which I'll mention here in a little bit, uh, it, the angle is too steep and often, you know, you'll actually bump into stuff while you're trying to actually take pictures of it, which is really annoying. Uh, so those diffusers, which I'm pointing to now, are basically, they're just kind of like this plastic, um, I'm guessing it's ABS, but I'm not sure. Somebody in the UK, I can't remember his name. Uh, I bought him off eBay a long time ago. Uh, they're actually like blown um, that way. And that they, they do a pretty good job, but I wanted basically with those flashes, you had two catch lights in spider eyes. I wanted it so that I only had one catch light, one uniform light source. Uh, but I also still wanted to use the MPE65. So where that comes in is this next diffuser that I'm showing here. This diffuser is just basically an amalgamation of trash. Um, the, the opaque stuff there, that is just leaf filter gels uh, for flashes. The piece that I'm touching right now is just a filing folder that I've cut to size. And then obviously I have my Instagram handle there. And on the back, what I've got, th that's just parchment paper, like for baking and stuff like that. Uh, that's just one more piece of material that the light can go through. And I have tin foil on the top. Uh, and that's in the hope that if there is any bounce or scatter the foil will redirect it back i'm not sure how effective that is but it makes me feel better now obviously i have the hole here uh tons of tape everywhere holding this whole thing together with that hole that lines up perfectly with the mt24 ex so what i used to do is i used to have like little tabs that would go inside and wedge in between the lens and the mt24 ex since then, I've gotten a, a little bit smarter, and I have this. So what this is, is a Koken uh, adapter for a 58mm uh, filter 
And what that does is essentially it, it just wedges uh, the diffuser or screws it in there and locks it into place. And here I'm going to fumble and try to get that all set up. Before with the when I would wedge it between the lens and everything, it, it was it was really annoying, especially if I wanted to try and take the stuff apart to go somewhere or pack it in a bag if I was flying or something like that. So with this, you know, it, it's a very simple system. The the diffuser folds flat. The filter I can just screw into the bracket or into the flash holder. And what I'm pointing to here is that's the actual model number for the filter gel. Uh, I use, I believe there's Frost, Lux, and some other filter uh, in there. So then what I have to do is I have to actually connect the that file folder to the diffuser. So I just use some simple clips here. And I'm going to pop both of those in. And these work relatively well. Um, the whole system, once <laughs> once it's all together, is a pretty solid unit. Uh, but by itself, it it takes a lot to get everything solid and not moving or anything like that. So get everything all set up there. And then essentially that folder just folds back and I clip them in there. So that took way too long. So here's the uh, the end result. Folders clipped in on both places. And the next uh, solution that I have for this is those two rubber bands that I have in my hand. What I'm showing here is with those two flash heads, with the two Israeli arms and everything else on there, it will actually cause those brackets uh, to fall down and slide. And I like to keep everything in one uniform set. So with this, what I can do is I put the rubber bands between those two clips and then it prevents the flash heads from moving around too much. And there it is all assembled. And that's essentially the entire flash unit right there. Um, I kind of drape the cord there uh, you can see me doing it here, just over the Israeli arms. That way that they're out of the way, they're not hanging, they don't get caught on anything. And there one of the rubber bands flew off because <laughs> that one clip fell off. Fixed it there, and now all I have to do is show you what it looks like from the front. That's what the bug or the spider or the flower or whatever I'm taking a picture of sees. And... Looks like I'm adjusting that there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the camera, or I'm sorry, the the flash to the camera. The MT24EX, the 100 millimeter macro, but the non-L version, uh, both have this, it, you can see it on the front of the lens there, this uh, basically uh, like a ring around the lens that the MT24EX can attach to. So basically what I'm doing here, so I'm just going to pop that on. There's a little button on the top of the bracket. Bam, there it is. Make sure everything's all good. And here I'm putting the flash controller on. And what I'm probably talking about is how weak the flash shoe is for it. It's plastic. It's absolutely terrifying. I'm always afraid that I'm going to break it. The newer flash that they have, the MT26EX RT or whatever it is, uh, is actually a lot better in that regard. It has the same uh, attachment as like a 580EX or a 600RT. So there's what it looks like all together. Um, there's my vintage camera strap and everything. 
and there you can see kind of through uh, the uh, the diffuser. And the unique thing about the MT24AX, which I really like, is the fact that as I increase magnification, the flash moves with it. What I used to do is I used to just have one single Israeli arm that attached to the tripod collar of the MPE65. That was a decent system and had pretty good results, but the the problem was with the was that the flash would not move with the magnification. Um, and I just could not stand that. It 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 was hard to work with, and I just didn't like it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach um, something that I've just been messing around with recently. It's basically a focusing aid uh, because I've started to find that taking pictures of stuff at night is a lot simpler and yields better results uh, if you can find what you're looking for at night. The reason being uh, you get to control every ounce of light that's going on to the subject so you know you don't have to deal with ambient light, you don't have to deal with the sun, you don't have to deal with any of that. Uh, and what this does, so essentially what I'm putting on that L bracket is an Israeli arm, which is attached to a GoPro mount, a GoPro quarter 20 to a GoPro uh, handlebar mount. And then the light on the inside is a Convoy S2 Plus, really simple 18650 light. And like I said, it just makes it really easy at night to focus on stuff. Um, it does make a slight catch light in eyes of stuff, but it's not bad. Um, and usually I use it on this low setting. So what it does is it projects light onto the diffuser, and then that light washes down onto the subject. And at night, that's all you really need. Um, it does spill some light out to the side. I haven't had any issues with that, uh, but that that's what the setup is. So there you can see how much is kind of spilling out. The nice thing though is that you get plenty of light on the subject and then that spill, like I said, doesn't really affect the whatever you're shooting. So then, you know, you don't have you don't really have to worry about too much. The the flash heads will overpower the flashlight, so then you don't have to worry about it. That's basically everything. Uh, I may put a few shots in here of basically what the results look like with this setup, and uh, that should be it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments, and thanks for watching. So these photos, uh, basically as you zoom in, you can actually see what look like pupils uh, in right now spider eyes. That's not accurate so those aren't actual pupils of the spider that is the opening of the lens that i was talking about um now you'll see a horned toad uh you can actually see his pupil but like i said the camera overwhelms it same with this skink this photo is basically just to show how soft light is with this setup and then the very last one is just those pupils like i said